What if I told you that the last 90 days before slaughter could completely transform your profit margin, meat quality, and everything you thought you knew about finishing cattle? Here's the truth. Most ranchers are leaving thousands of dollars on the table simply because they don't understand what happens during this critical window. And the worst part? The decision you make right now, today, could mean the difference between premium prices and settling for average. So before you send another animal to market, you need to hear this. Because what I'm about to show you goes against what many old-school ranchers still believe. But the science, the market data, and real-world results don't lie. Let's start with something that might surprise you. Grass-fed beef has exploded in popularity, yes. But here's what nobody tells you. Pure grass-fed cattle often lack the marbling, the tenderness, and the flavor profile that premium buyers are willing to pay top dollar for. Now, does that mean grass-fed is bad? Absolutely not. But it does mean you need to understand the game you're playing. Because there's a middle ground, a strategy that combines the health benefits and ethical appeal of grass-fed with the market advantages of grain finishing. And it all happens in those final 90 days. Here's how it works. You raise your cattle on pasture, let them graze naturally, build muscle, develop their frame, and live the way cattle were designed to live. Then, in the last 90 days before processing, you introduce a carefully managed grain finishing protocol. This is not about feedlots. This is not about confinement. This is strategic finishing that maximizes marbling, improves tenderness, and boosts your price per pound without sacrificing animal welfare or your reputation as a quality producer. Now, you might be asking, why 90 days specifically? Great question. Research shows that the sweet spot for grain finishing, where you get optimal intramuscular fat deposition without excessive external fat, happens between 70 and 120 days. But 90 days hits the perfect balance for most breeds and most market conditions. Too short and you won't see enough marbling improvement. Too long and you start adding wasteful external fat that processors will trim away, meaning you're feeding expensive grain for nothing. Let's talk about what actually happens inside the animal during this period. When you transition cattle from grass to a grain-heavy ration, their rumen microbiome shifts. The bacteria that digest starch become dominant, producing more propionic acid, which drives glucose production, which then gets converted into intramuscular fat, that beautiful marbling that makes meat tender and flavorful. But here's the critical part. You cannot make this transition overnight. Rush it and you'll trigger acidosis, digestive upset, reduced feed intake, and even death in severe cases. This is where most ranchers fail. They know about grain finishing, but they don't understand the transition protocol. Here's the right way to do it. Start at day zero with your normal grass or hay-based diet. Over the next 14 to 21 days, Gradually increase the grain portion while decreasing the forage. Begin with 10 to 15% grain, then move to 25%, then 50%, and finally up to 70 to 80% grain with 20 to 30% quality forage remaining. Never go 100% grain. Your cattle still need fiber for rumen health. Monitor their manure daily. It should be firm, but not hard. If you see loose, acidic-smelling manure, you've pushed too hard too fast. Slow down, add more forage back in, and let their system adapt. And here's something almost nobody talks about. The type of grain matters enormously. Corn is energy-dense and relatively safe for rumen health when introduced properly. Barley finishes cattle faster but carries higher acidosis risk. Wheat should be limited to 30% of the grain mix maximum because of its rapid fermentation. And here's a trick many successful finishers use. Include a buffer like sodium bicarbonate or limestone at 1-2% to of the total ration to help stabilize rumen pH. This simple addition can prevent thousands of dollars in losses from digestive problems. But let's address the elephant in the room. Cost. Grain is expensive, and you're probably thinking, is this really worth it? Here's the math. Let's say you're finishing a 1,200-pound steer. 
In those 90 days, at an average daily gain of three to three and a half pounds per day, you'll add roughly 270 to 315 pounds of live weight. At a feed conversion ratio of about six to one during finishing, you'll use approximately 1,600 to 1,900 pounds of grain plus forage. If grain costs 15 cents per pound, that's roughly $240 to $285 in grain costs alone. Add forage and supplements, you're looking at around $350 to $400 total feed investment for 90 days. Now here's where it gets interesting. Grass-fed beef typically sells for $5 to $6 per pound hanging weight in direct-to-consumer markets. Grain-finished beef with good marbling, $7 to $9 per pound, sometimes more. That extra marbling can also bump you up an entire USDA grade, from select to choice or choice to prime. In commercial markets, that grade difference can mean 40 to 60 cents more per pound on a live weight basis. Run those numbers and that 90-day investment pays for itself several times over. Now, before we go deeper into the exact feeding protocols and the mistakes that can ruin everything, do me a favor hit that subscribe button right now. Why? Because we're building something special here at Biggest Bulls and Cow, a community of ranchers who are committed to doing this right, to learning, to improving, and to producing the highest quality beef possible while treating our animals with respect. And if you're still on the fence, just wait until you hear what I'm about to tell you next, because the timing of when you start this 90-day protocol could mean the difference between success and total failure. All right, let's get into the details that separate profitable finishers from those who struggle. First major mistake, starting the 90-day finish too early or too late. Your cattle need to have reached sufficient frame size and skeletal maturity before grain finishing makes sense. For most beef breeds, this means at least 14 to 16 months of age and 1,100 to 1,300 pounds live weight, depending on the breed and genetics. Start too early with small framed animals and you'll produce overly fat carcasses with poor cutability. Start too late with fully mature cattle and they won't deposit intramuscular fat efficiently. You'll just be adding wasteful cover fat. Second mistake, inconsistent feeding. Grain finished cattle need to eat the same amount at the same time every single day. Their rumen microbes are finely tuned to the ration you're providing. Miss a feeding, change the timing significantly, or vary the quantities and you disrupt that microbial balance. This leads to reduced feed intake, erratic gains, and poor feed conversion. Set a schedule and stick to it religiously. Third mistake, ignoring water quality and availability. During grain finishing, cattle will drink significantly more water, often 12 to 15 gallons per day or more. If water is limited, dirty, or frozen, feed intake drops immediately. And here's something many don't realize, water temperature matters. Extremely cold water reduces intake. If you're finishing in winter, consider heated waterers or at least break ice multiple times daily. Fourth mistake, inadequate bunk space. Every animal needs at least 24 to 30 inches of bunk space to eat without competition. Overcrowding creates boss animals that overeat and timid animals that undereat, resulting in uneven finish quality. If you're finishing multiple head, ensure everyone can eat at once, comfortably. Now let's talk about monitoring progress, because you can't manage what you don't measure. Weigh your cattle at the start of the 90-day period, then every 21 to 30 days. Calculate average daily gain. If you're not seeing at least two and a half to three pounds per day during the grain finishing phase, something is wrong. Either the ration is off, the cattle is sick, they're stressed, or the feed quality is poor. Investigate immediately and adjust. Body condition scoring is equally important. You're aiming for a BCS of six to seven at slaughter, moderate to moderately thick fat cover. You should see fat beginning to show in the brisket, along the ribs and over the loin. But if you see excessive fat in the tail head and a heavy pendulous brisket, you've pushed too far. That's wasted feed and money. Here's another critical consideration, breed and genetics. British breeds like Angus, Hereford, and Red Angus marble easily and respond beautifully to grain finishing. Continental breeds like Charolais, Limousine, and Simmental are leaner by nature and require longer finishing periods or higher energy rations to achieve comparable marbling. And if you're finishing crossbreds, understand the dominant genetics in your animals because that will dictate your finishing strategy. Let's also address the grass-fed purist argument because it's important. 
Some consumers specifically want 100% grass-fed beef for health, environmental, or ethical reasons. That market absolutely exists, and if that's your niche, honor it completely. But understand that it's a smaller, more specialized market. The majority of beef consumers, whether they're buying at retail or restaurants, prefer the tenderness and flavor that comes with marbling. And the reality is, grain finishing for 90 days still allows you to market your beef as predominantly pasture-raised, which appeals to a broader customer base while commanding premium prices. Now, what about health and welfare during finishing? This is non-negotiable. Grain finishing should never mean confined, stressful, or inhumane conditions. Your cattle can and should still have access to open space, fresh air, and the ability to express natural behaviors. The grain is simply a dietary adjustment, not a lifestyle prison sentence. Stress reduces feed intake and gain, so keeping animals calm and comfortable is not just ethical, it's profitable. Watch for signs of illness or metabolic disorders daily. Labored breathing, excessive salivation, reluctance to eat, or standing away from the group are red flags. Acidosis, bloat, and liver abscesses are the primary risks during grain finishing. Prevention through proper transition, consistent feeding, adequate fiber, and buffering agents is a thousand times easier and cheaper than treatment. One more advanced strategy, and this is for those of you really looking to maximize quality, consider the fat source in your ration. Adding a small amount of high quality fat, like flaxseed or fish oil, can improve the omega-3 fatty acid profile of the meat, giving you a marketing edge with health-conscious consumers. It's a small tweak, but it can differentiate your product in a crowded market. And here's the final piece of the puzzle, timing your finish to market demand. If you're selling direct to consumer, plan your 90-day finish so animals are ready during peak buying seasons, late fall before holidays, early spring when freezers are empty. If you're selling to processors or at auction, understand seasonal price fluctuations and time your finish accordingly. The best finished animal sold at the wrong time still leaves money on the table. So let's recap what you've learned today. Grass-fed beef has value but strategic 90-day grain finishing gives you marbling, tenderness, and premium pricing. Transition slowly over 14 to 21 days to protect rumen health. Use the right grain mix, include buffers, and maintain consistent feeding schedules. Monitor weight gain, body condition, and animal health closely. Match your strategy to your breed genetics and target market, and never sacrifice animal welfare for short-term gain. Ethical production and profitability go hand in hand. If you've made it this far, you're serious about improving your cattle operation. And that's exactly the kind of rancher we want in this community. So here's what I need you to do right now. First, smash that subscribe button for Biggest Bulls and Cow, because we're just getting started. Every single week, we're bringing you the strategies, the science, and the real world experience that turns average ranchers into exceptional producers. Second, Drop a comment below and tell me, are you currently finishing your cattle on grain, pure grass-fed, or are you thinking about trying this 90-day protocol? Share your experience, ask your questions, because we all learn faster when we learn together. And third, share this video with another rancher who could benefit from this information. Maybe it's a neighbor, a family member, or someone in your local cattlemen's association. Knowledge is power, but only when it's shared. We're building a movement here, a community of ranchers committed to excellence, sustainability, and profitability. And you're now part of that. So welcome. Let's keep pushing forward. Keep learning, keep improving, and keep producing the best beef in the world. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, keep those cattle healthy and those pastures green.